channel. Today we're going to be talking about something a little bit different, which is to say we're going to be talking about Dolphin Emulator. Now you may be asking, what is Dolphin Emulator? In fact, depending on how new you are to these kinds of things, you may be asking, what is an emulator? Well, an emulator is a program for your computer that allows it to play uh, console games. Dolphin Emulator specifically works with Wii and or GameCube games. And of course, the big question that you might have is, why? Because usually this does require you to own either a Wii or GameCube to do this, so why would you go through all of this trouble to be able to do it on your computer? Well, there are a couple of reasons. Um, Sometimes it's useful to just have all of your games in one place. It's nice to be able to maybe record the games that you want to play on a console. It's very hard to do that on a traditional, let's say, Nintendo Wii. Um, it's kind of nice to be able to hook up alternate types of controllers and such things to these kinds of games. And also it's just kind of a fun project to go through and figure out this type of thing. So anyway, I'm going to be talking about Dolphin Emulator, and more specifically, showing you how to set up a game. But I thought to myself, well, I could just pick a simple and easy game to start with, but you know what, let's not do that, because that's no fun. We're going to start with a game that at least seems like it has a little bit more of a interesting part to it. So we're going to start by setting up Skylander's Spyro's Adventure. For those who don't know, Skylander Spyro's Adventure is an interesting game where instead of choosing characters through a traditional character selection screen, they sold little plastic figures and a piece that hooked into your Wii, and then you would choose your character based on what figure you put on the Wii. Now, as you can imagine, that's a bit more complex than your traditional Wii game setup because it does, of course, require an additional part be plugged into the console itself. However, I'm here to tell you that that additional bit of complexity is not a problem for Dolphin Emulator, and the goal of this tutorial is that in showing you that slightly more complex setup with Dolphin Emulator, that you will then have all the tools you need to emulate basically any game you want on Dolphin Emulator. Alright, now of course the first step to getting this set up is that you're going to need the actual file for the game, and that's actually going to be a big part of where our issue is. As you can see here, I have several game files for all of the different games I use in Dolphin Emulator, so step one is going to be acquiring that file. And here is where we have to jump through a couple of hoops. You see, we are going to have to take it from the game disk that we bought for our traditional Wii and find a way to transfer it to this computer. Now, in order to do this, there's going to be quite the process involved, but the very first thing we're going to need is a SD card. I have placed one inside of my computer here. You do need a good way to use one in your computer, whether it's a built-in slot or a slot that you attach via USB. Whatever it is, you just need to have an SD card that should have a capacity of at least 4 gigabytes. You'll probably want more. And then the next thing you need to do is make sure it's formatted properly. Mine is formatted FAT32. If yours says FAT32 or just straight FAT, both of those are fine. Anything else is probably not going to work. Okay, before we begin, allow me to describe the process that we're going to be going through. You see, we need to acquire the file to use in Dolphin Emulator. The file, of course, contains all the information about the game itself. Question is, how are we going to get that file into our computer? Well, you might be like, yeah, let's just uh, stick the Wii game in a disk drive and just... No, that's not going to work. What we're going to have to do is take the file off of the game disk, put it on our SD card, and move it over to the computer itself. However, that is a harder thing to do than it sounds. In order to do that, we're going to need to use a special Wii program called CleanRip. It's a special backup tool. However, in order to get CleanRip, CleanRip on our Wii, we're going to have to install the Homebrew channel. But in order to get the homebrew channel on our Wii, we're going to have to use a program called Letterbomb. And so we're going to start by installing Letterbomb so that we can get the homebrew channel on there, so we can put clean rip on there, so that we can take the game file off of the disk onto the SD card and put it into our computer to use with Dolphin Emulator. If that sounds too complex for you, yeah, me too, buddy. The first step is essential, if rather boring. We just have to make sure your Wii has the correct software on it to be able to run these programs. Here's how to check that. First, go to the bottom left corner of the screen and hit the large Wii button. Then on this screen, the block you want is Wii Settings. 
Once you're here, look in the top right corner of the screen for your software version. It needs a 4.3 to work. Also, take note of the letter as that's your region, and you'll need that information later. While you're here, you'll also want to grab your console's MAC address, as that's information you'll need later. That's not something you really want on the internet, though. Alright, now that we have all the information you're going to need, it's time to start installing Letterbomb. First, you'll need to navigate to their website, I'll put a link in the description. Then, make sure to tick the correct uh, little place for the software version you have. Then, you see these here, these are actually little boxes, and that's where you'll enter in your MAC address. Once you have that in here, you can decide whether you want this in here or not, but it's typically a better idea to grab it. You will, of course, need to ensure that you're not a robot and cut the red wire. It'll give you a little zip file here. You want to take this file, you'll want to unzip it to this little area right here. Come and extract all of these files down to the root of your SD card. Alright, now before you continue, the next step is to go back and triple check you did all of this right. Another good thing would be to go and make sure that your console is set to the correct date and time. You can't actually see any of this, but I had a big issue in this part of the video, and it turned out it's because I forgot to set my console back to the current time. So definitely make sure you do that. Once you have the SD card inserted in your console, you'll want to go to the message board or the envelope icon. Go back one day and you should see the letter bomb. If you click on it, it'll start up, and then it'll check for an ELF file. After it's done, it'll pull up a anti-scamming screen, which is also its loading screen. Once this screen's done, which may take a while, it'll tell you to press 1 to continue, which you should do. Here you can tell it to continue again. And of course, it'll show you this info if you want to see it. <clears throat> and then, you should go up and tell it to install the Homebrew channel. Tell it to continue. And it'll begin installing this tool, which is good. After that, hit continue, and then you can exit right out of the installer. If you go back to the main Wii menu now, you should see, probably on the second page, depending on how many apps you have, that the new homebrew channel has been installed. Alright, the next bit of software we're going to need is called CleanRip. The first thing you're going to need to do, of course, is re-grab your SD card and stick it back in your computer. Then, navigate to the CleanRip website, I'll put a link in the description, and download the zip archive. It'll zip it down here, you can open this up, just grab all of this, and just stick it on your SD card. Once you have your SD card set up, stick it back in your Wii, and load up the homebrew channel. Once you have that started up, it'll automatically load what files are on your SD card, and you should see CleanRip pop right up. Go ahead and tell it to load that. It'll take a bit bringing it up, and it will get started. Uh, usual disclaimer for dealing with these kinds of software, you can just go ahead and continue that. I honestly don't know what that does, but I haven't had any issues yet, and I hit yes, just to be safe. You stuck an SD card in there, probably. You can tell it to continue. What does that do? I don't know. I hit yes to be safe. Get your disk in there. It's okay if it was already in there. Just hit A on it. You can change these settings if you like. I personally would recommend doing that, but as you can see here, I kind of messed it up and it seems to be going fine. And then you'll be brought here, which will be your vision for the next little while as this is probably going to take quite a bit. After a bit, depending on the chunk size you chose on the first menu, you may get this screen. This is a great chance to take out your SD card, stick it back in your computer, pull the files off, and stick it back in here to get the next bit. This keeps your SD card from filling up all the way. You may have to do this a couple of times, again depending on A, the size of the game, and B, the size of the SD card you got. 
Alright, if you've done everything correctly up to this point, you should have a directory on your computer that now has several ISO files labeled part 0, part 1, part 2, etc, etc, etc. Now in order to keep going, we are going to need to join these files into a single file, and we're going to have to do that via the command prompt. So before we get started, go ahead and copy this directory, because you're going to need it. Then open up the command prompt, you can just type in command prompt, although I have it recently brought up. Then I'm going to type in cd and then paste in that directory. This just tells the command prompt it's working in that directory now. Now I'm going to type in copy slash b and then I'm going to look at these files and this says sspe52. So I'm going to put in sspe52. Then I'm going to put dot part um, I'm going to put in a question mark here, dot ISO, space, then I'm going to put full ISO, dot ISO. I'm going to hit enter. Let's see here if it has worked its magic. Here's this file, it's called full ISO, dot ISO, and you can see here it is currently working. It's got uh, through part 0 and part 1. So now we'll just wait for it to go through the entire process. Alright, if you've done everything before this correctly, then this is the part where you download Dolphin Emulator. You can just Google download Dolphin Emulator, Dolphin Emulator download, Dolphin download emulator, although I wouldn't recommend that one, it should probably still work. You'll want to find the correct version to use. I do typically use a beta version because it's more up to date. It is a little bit less stable. I either way is really okay. That's entirely your thing. There are some visions for thirty uh, versions for thirty-two bit systems down here, and uh, some stuff for Androids, Ubuntu's, and Mac systems. If you're one of the weirdos who uses one of those, once you've downloaded your Dolphin emulator file, it should come as an archive which I have used 7-zip to open up, you want to find the place where you have decided you want to install your emulator. Come down here, copy that there file path, and extract it to that location. Okay. Once you have all that set up, you can uh, find dolphin.exe. You can uh, create a shortcut if you feel like it because that'll make things easier later. But this is the file you're going to launch to start up Dolphin. So I shall double click on that. It'll launch. And here we go. This look familiar? All right. I can then, you will see, look at that. Skylander Spires Avenger already in there. When you load it up because it's your first time, it may ask you to set a games directory. So if that happens, just point it towards the directory you put your game in earlier. All right, now if we had chosen to install any other game, we'd be done. But Spire's Adventure is different because it needs a portal of power. Well, how do we install a portal of power? Here's how you install a portal of power. Step one, you're going to need this software. It's called Zadig. And I will, of course, again, link it in the description. Now, you are going to want to download it. Mine says Zadig 2.5. Just get whatever the latest version is. You can download that. It'll hand you this handy dandy executable file. I'm going to click it, and it's going to give me a little dialog that's going to say yes or no. Do I want to install it? Guess what? Yes. Yes, I do. All right, with that out of the way... All right, you can see I have my copy of Zadig pulled up right here. The first thing you're going to want to do is go over to Options and tell it to list all the devices. Make sure you have your Portal of Power plugged in, and it should show up on the list as a Spyro Porta. Don't know what the typo's about. Make sure on the right side it says Win USB Engine, then just click the big O button underneath it. It probably says something different than what I have here because I've done this before, but it's fine. You can go ahead and hit that. It may also ask you if you're sure or not. You can go ahead and hit yes. Then it'll go ahead and start installing the drivers. Don't worry if it takes a while because it can take a while. Alrighty. Assuming you have the drivers installed, you're almost ready to go. Next, you need to come up here to Configuration, to Wii, come down to your whitelisted USB pass-through devices. I'm going to add one of those. Should bring up this list. Go ahead and add the Skylanders portal so it knows it's okay to use that. 
Seems like it works. All right. That was a whole lot. But if you were able to follow that, then you should be able to play basically any Wii game you feel like playing, just on Dolphin with little to no difficulty. Well, I had fun doing this, and I will see what we will get to putting out next. Thanks, and come on back. Thank you.